I knew from the time I was a small kid that I wanted to be a race car driver. There's just been a lot of hard work to get there, and, and I had a lot of good groundwork. If we lost a race, we always had a game plan by 10 o'clock Monday morning. If everybody was going to go left, we had no problem going right. That was easy. You know, when you have Robert Yates, horsepower, and a guy like Davey Allison, sometimes it was. Guardrails were dangerous, and we ate them up. The phone was ringing, but nobody was home. He's all banged up. His eyes are about to explode. We want to win this championship, and that's why I'm here today. I'm looking up there, I'm like, is this really happening? Wow, you can't get much closer than this. There has never been a race team that had more highs and more lows than we had in 1992. We sure paid the price for it. We weren't in the hospital. We were tasting that champagne. It was my number one best year ever, except for that final outcome. Allison's attempt to win the Winston Cup has come to an end. Everything's fine. Championship hopes are over. Things now. <laughs> you know, back then it was a lot smaller. So, you know, as a young kid and with a lot of energy and and uh, you know, the whole sport was like that right then. I mean it was it was wide open. In the nineteen ninety two season, I was over uh, the pit crew and uh, we had a, a lot of really good talent, a lot of youth with a lot of experience. Uh, Larry McReynolds uh, was on board as a leader. I mean, the biggest thing is Davey feels good about it, and then I, then I feel good about it. If he's got Getting ready for 1992, we didn't really lose anyone from the 91 season. We won five races in 1991, finished third in the points. Davey's confidence level was up headed into 1992. The team's confidence level was up there. And I think we felt like that we were poised to win that 1992 Winston Cup championship. We felt like all the pieces were there. It was really a, a, a single team effort. You know, we didn't have to get on TV and thank anybody else because it was the team that did it. In our sport, preparation meets opportunity. And when we showed up at Daytona, we knew we had a shot to fire one at them. Davey Allison leading here again at Daytona. Morgan Shepard separates the two. Coming to the strike, Davy Allison first. Morgan Shepard gets it all back there. Has he got anything left? Davy Allison is going to win the Daytona 500. I cannot believe it. Look at <laughs> Ready any time. Look at uh -huh. <laughs> With the wind like this, it, it sure puts the adrenaline in your blood veins. In about 30 minutes, I'll probably collapse from disbelief. I think we were all a little bit numb to the fact that we had actually accomplished it, but I think it was very rewarding for all of us, from Davey all the way down to everybody on the crew, to get there to victory lane for the Daytona 500. Be able to pull into victory lane in the Daytona 500 and with that kind of strength, uh, I'm telling you, it was it was a big day for him. Dale Earnhardt held the previous two NASCAR Premier Series championships. But the 1992 season began with title contenders Alan Kulwicki and Bill Elliott chasing the confident Davey Allison and the Robert Yates number 28 Haviland team. I would call it uh, a nice cherry-picked group that uh, everybody knew their job, worked as a team. There was never a situation that we couldn't really dig ourselves out of. But I think the biggest element that was in place was just Davey Allison. 
young, scrawny kid, had great heart. Davey even would go in at times and turn wrenches and do some welding and do some things, because he was good at that, and he enjoyed doing that. He was actually a crew member who basically drove the race car. That was his mentality. Davey hey. Allison absolutely was one of the toughest individuals I've ever run across. He would ride around all the time with his windows rolled up in the heat on in the summer and just just work his sweat cleanse. We go out in the summer, no air conditioning, windows rolled up, I'm over about to pass out, you know, and he's, how do you like my world? This is what I do. You know, this is how I make a living. <laughs> he was ready. You couldn't worry him out in a race car. He was designed to outlast the next guy. Allison weathered four straight wins by rival Bill Elliott as the Daytona 500 victory secured an early season points lead. But a pattern for the season emerged just as early. Weeks six and seven showed the volatile ride the 28 team would take and the toughness a title shot would demand. We had wrecked really hard uh, at the Bristol race. In fact, Davey had some cracked ribs. And the next week was North Wilkesboro, and he was hurting so bad that we actually had to get Jimmy Hensley uh, to practice and qualify the car. Davey started the race. Jimmy Hensley stood in those pits all day long in that driver's uniform. And 50, 75 laps in the race, I looked at Jimmy, and I said, Jimmy, we appreciate everything you've done. I'm glad you're here, but I promise you he's not going to get out of that race car. He is in it until the checkered flag. Here's the checkered flag, and Davey Allison wins it. I want to say thanks to all the guys on the crew for a great job in the pits today. And I want to say thanks to Jimmy Hensley. Having him here this week was a tremendous help. It happened pretty early. You're like, man, this is kind of special. And after that, you just think that's how you did every week. And, he, and for the most part, I see he about had to do that every week for the rest of the season. He played hurt quite a bit. This is a tinge unit. Where is it hooked to? Right underneath his arm, right on the muscle. Right up here. <laughs> This Memorial Day, Fox Sports 1's 10 Days of Thunder concludes with the Army's Best Ranger competition and the Golden Boy Monday Night at the Fights. It's all this Memorial Day on Fox Sports 1. Hey, let's talk probiotics. Our digestive health? Aaron Andrews? Yeah, and did you know TrueBiotics is a daily probiotic that helps in two ways? It supports digestive and immune health by working in your gut, where 70% of your immune system lives. Now in chewables. New from Wagner, the Flexio 890 with a revolutionary nozzle that sprays any coating. And the industry's most powerful turbine, located in the base, which makes the sprayer lighter and perfect for longer painting projects, like lawn furniture, a group of doors, a hallway, Harry's hallway, the Wagner Flexio 890. It's simply a smarter way to paint. With Expedia, you always get the lowest price. Book any flight or hotel. And if you find it for less, we'll match it and give you $50 back. That's the Expedia guarantee. Is it me or is it really hot in here? Your AC is so not cool. Yeah, but what can I do about it? Fix yourself with AC Pro. Who's got time for that? It only takes 10 minutes, and you save a ton of money. Recharge your car's AC with AC Pro. Just unscrew the service cap, connect the easy reach hose, and squeeze the trigger. That's it. So we cool? We cool. Everyone's a pro with AC Pro. Go to acprocold.com. That great Daytona 500 run he had with the outset of the season. The winner is from the Alabama gang. It's Davey Allison's time. Celebrate in the Talladega victory lane. It became evident in 1992 that it was either going to probably be Bill Elliott or, or Davey Allison that was going to go to victory lane. But we were showing some inconsistency. You know, we won Wilkesboro, we won Talladega, but we wrecked at Bristol, we wrecked somewhere else. We were winning one week and wrecking the next. Davey Allison, the points leader, is in the wall, coming off turn two, some heavy damage to the Hamlin board. 
And then, of course, when we got to the Sprint All-Star race in May, we figured out how to do both on the same night. They came by to get the white flag, and Kyle Petty and, and Earnhardt were ahead of us. Up front, Earnhardt and Kyle Petty are separated now by only two car lengths. Davey Allison shuffled back a bit, but he's gaining. Kyle, he's up to Earnhardt's oh. bumper. Coming to the checkered flag. Here comes Davey Allison to the bottom. It'll be the finish. Oh, and finish past the finish line. And Davey Allison is in a shower of sparks. And the place is going crazy because it just pancaked the whole left side of the car and actually cracked his helmet. He won the race, but he sure paid the price for it. You know, to be honest with you, I really didn't think anything about Davey Allison. I I'm not saying I didn't think anything about him. Like, ah, he'd be all right. You know, <laughs> like. Yeah, he's fine. He's, you know, he's made out of rubber or something. Oh, he keeps coming back. We actually went back to the shop that night to get our 600 car ready. The all-star wreck didn't cost points, but it did deplete the team's inventory of prepared cars. True to fashion, they clawed back to win at Michigan, but dropped his second in points after a vicious wreck at Pocono that bruised more than just their hopes for the 1992 cup title. He's going to be OK. Uh, they're, they're checking him over real good and fixing to fly him uh, to the hospital. Uh, we're just, uh, you know, our prayers are with him. Judy Allison, Davy's mom, met us in the hospital. And she said, guys, he looks a little funny. He's very swollen because of the G-forces. He was just, I mean, he was beat up. His face and head was swollen so bad, his ears looked like they were all the way back around the back of his head. His two red eyes, two red eyes is all you could see, just as red as you could paint them. And he stopped us dead in our tracks. He said, I want y'all to get your butts out of here, get on my airplane and go home and get my Talladega car ready. So all these drivers all take helicopter out of the racetrack because it's cool. He did it because he's, he, you know, that's how he had to leave the racetrack. All right, do you, you feel comfortable this in front of you? Everything's fine. People kept saying, Davey, take your glasses off, take your glasses off. And, and Davey's like, you don't really want me to do that. Yeah, let's see your eyes. Take them off. If y'all want to see it, I'll show them to you, but it's ugly. Davey smiled and he said, I told you, you didn't want to see this. <laughs> in half a season, Davey Allison suffered broken ribs a concussion, a broken forearm and wrist. And each time, he returned to the starting grid the next week. His right forearm has two plates in it to hold it together. He's got pins across the wrist bones to hold him in position, and he's got a broken collarbone. How long can you go today? Can't think of any better place to be, Mike. It's great therapy to be back in the car today, and the guys at the shop have done a great job bouncing back from the adversity this week, and we want to win this championship, and that's why I'm here today. We feel like if we did anything other than our normal game plan, we're actually taken away from our chances of winning or our chances of winning the championship. Baseball Night in America is back on Fox. Ripped. He got him. Catch the game's biggest stars tearing it up in primetime. What a catch! Phenom Mike Trout. Matt Holliday. The Robert Yates Racing Team had survived a season's worth of drama during the first half of 1992. In August, they were hit with another blow. Davy Allison's younger brother Clifford was tragically killed while practicing for a nationwide series race in Michigan. We get in touch with Davy, and you know he's he's very upset and he's very torn up. Obviously, his brother had been killed. Well, immediately, Robert and I started talking to him. What do you want to do? 
who do you want us to put in this race car thinking he's going to go back to Hueytown? He said, let me tell you guys something. Yeah, I am hurting more than you can ever imagine, but I'm here to do a job, and I'm going to do that job, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And then when we finish this race on Sunday, hopefully winning this race, then we'll go home, and that's when we'll take care of business with my brother. I mean, we're here to win this thing. This man's going to drive his heart out to win it. We've worked our butts off to win it. It was a very, very hard, you know, situation for him. Shows up on Sunday, gets in that thing, and he did what he always does, was 110%. We got out of there and, and, and went and buried Clifford. Davey was like my second son. We would have discussions about life, about religion, things that probably you didn't want to talk to your dad about. He didn't look like uh, death was the end of, of everything. He was realistic about it. Probably the toughest time of my life, uh, n not knowing what to do and having to regain control of my emotions. And I knew that he would want me to go on and do my job. It was kind of a double-edged sword. Racing had taken his brother, but yet that was, that was his life. And I think he just felt like he needed to wrap himself up in, in racing and do the absolute best he could, possibly in honor of his brother. Obviously, it had to affect him to some degree. We had a little bit of a run there after that that we didn't click off as many great finishes as we like. We've got one car spinning, Davey Allison. He loops it again, and the car comes to a halt in the grass. Oh, Davey Allison is in the wall, cut off turn two, some heavy damage to the Hamlin Ford. Yeah, I was off a little bit tonight, and, and I made the mistakes. I think I'm going to go home and regroup and get with these guys, you know, and try to figure out what it's going to take to get myself back going again. Over the course of August, in early September, we were almost digressing a little bit because we weren't making our stuff better. We were just focused on making Davey comfortable and just trying to get to the end of each race. In the same token, Bill Elliott and that 11 bunch, they were getting better. So I think they were getting better, we were getting worse, and obviously they had stretched it out on us. The points, Bill Elliott is on top by 109 over Allison. Coming into the last eight or 10 races, because of everything Davey had gone through, the media viewpoint, I think, was, I don't think he's going to win this. Davey handled controversy better than anybody. He didn't shoot people out. He didn't get upset. He didn't cuss. He didn't tell you how sorry a pit crew you got. He would almost laugh about it. I just think we appreciate where we were, but we didn't point fingers. When the schedule hit September, Elliot and the 11 began to sputter. As the races counted down, so too did the points margin. We never gave up. The crew, I swear, I don't, I don't think we even knew any better. Like, OK, we'll, we'll just come back. Believe me, there is no quit here in this half of team. We don't even have a clock at our shop. We just work whatever it takes. Hey, man, we got to fight for this. This is why we're here. That effort and everybody's energy never wavered. It was actually really cool. Thanks, guys. They just buckled down and they decided, let's take this a race at a time and let's see where we come out. Be smart. Lock it down, lock it down. Dodge Rex. Left, left, whoa, right there. No penalties on pit road. Let's go, let's go. Finish the race. OK, buddy, OK. We're going to win this thing. Out of turn four, Davey Allison will win it. Yeah! Way to go, guys! We won the race at Phoenix, the next to the last race, and that's actually where we took the points lead back. In your face, baby! Woo! Right. I remember him sitting in the car in Victory Lane and just like a kid on Christmas. He was just that excited. And it hit him, you know what? We could go to Atlanta, finish anywhere in the top five, and no matter what anybody else does, we can win this thing. The Rangers take a huge step back. The largest crowd ever to watch a sporting event in the state of Georgia is gathered here to witness the crowning of a champion. Mathematically, six drivers had a shot at the championship. 
For Allison, the numbers were simple. Finish fifth or better and win the cup. But in a season that showed no mercy, the finale would follow suit. Let oh, no! Baby got through. We ran over something, put a hole in the nose. I was making patches and orchestrating how to patch the hole. Ryan Pemberton now had knuckles working in unison. And we came back from that. We're like, all right, now we're, we're right where we need to be. You pull out all stops in the final race. I just remember thinking, there's no way we can keep up with all of what's going on here today. Wow, you can't get much closer than this. It was changing lap after lap after lap as far as who was in the point lead. Every single spot counts, and every single part is beating rather quickly here in the Alice of Pen, guys. And then on lap 254 of 328, it's just like it stopped. long, tough, emotional season has come to an end. The thing that I remember the most about it is how cool Davey Allison was. He had every right to be kicking and screaming right then. Maybe throw a helmet or something, but he didn't do it. Everybody at Robert Yates Racing deserves a lot better than this. And, you know, they deserve to win that championship this year, and we didn't get it, so we'll just go back and we'll get ready for next year, and we'll come out and try again. It just wasn't meant to be with a smile on his face. Man, oh man, that's something to be said for that guy. Resilient to the end, the 28 never gave in. Alan Kulwicki beat Bill Elliott to capture the cup, leaving one team immortal and another brokenhearted. I don't believe I've ever remember my son Doug Yates crying, but I remember him crying that day, walking out of the racetrack and he was in tears. And that's, you know, I'd been there, lost so many times that, you know, I sort of used to it. But for Doug, it just killed me. To go through everything that our race team had went through, uh, we never questioned why we didn't win that championship. We knew we would have many more years to win a championship. Now, I've got to say, about three or four months later, it became a little cloudier why we didn't win that championship, because that's obviously when we lost Davey Allison. Allison's death in July of 1993 shocked a nation. His down-home persona matched with unfulfilled potential keep him in the hearts of fans and his team to this day. There's a lot of new fans Maybe they'll watch this and they'll, they'll have a better appreciation for what he was going to do and what he was going to become. Davey will have altered the record books, for sure. That's why we're talking about him 20 years later. <laughs>